if you can hear me, I'm going to try to, try to talk through the next couple of corners. Now, we are coming up from Cave Valley. Actually, we came up through Inverness, um, in town, and we are coming up. Basically, this, this road is going to take us into Spalding to Wallenstein and so on. And as you can see, there's hardly a straight stretch of road here. Now, you have to be very careful with these roads. And I would recommend that this is Alston, by the way. Alston. And this is going to take us to Ralston and then into Spalding. Yeah, I would not recommend a foreigner driving here at all. As you can see, I am driving a manual, which I am not fond of. But it's uh, it gives you a little bit more control over your driving. No, it's it. Sometimes you just have no choice but to drive on the wrong side of the road to get out of some of these potholes. And you have to be very careful of these corners because you will come around here, you'll see a pothole, you'll be concentrating on that, and there'll be a car coming around. Like here, for example, you should really be over where you see those nasty potholes are, but then you'll have to stay over here. Now, here's the problem the car is coming down the street, he has the right of way, but you are occupying his right of way. So, those are the things you have to be really, really cognizant of. You have to keep those in mind as you drive. Now, we are going to a very rough patch right here, as you can see, and that logic applies. Now, see, here's a big pothole right on the center of the street. Something can come around the corner. As I'm going around this corner, I have to be very careful. I have to kind of look around the corner because this guy may be coming and he has the right of way. And you may end up in a bad swipe, side swiping incident. So, driving on these roads requires a certain amount of concentration that most foreigners just do not have simply because it is not something they have had to practice so if you are coming to Jamaica guys unless you are from a country that gives you an advantage like uh, Europe uh, and uh, England specifically then you are at a distinct disadvantage if you should try to rent a car and try to drive here right off the bat my suggestion if you are going to try to drive here or if you really really feel you want to enjoy the you know piloting yourself around the island is to get somebody to drive you around for a, you know a few days or you know the first few times that you go down the street and let them see exactly how the situation is because right now this is not really that bad believe it or not although we are going we're swinging left and right getting all the potholes left and right and all of that this really isn't that bad there are situations that are worse and there are areas for some really strange reasons where the drivers are horrible they will force you off the road just for fun actually and they will uh, essentially they believe that they have the right of way at all times so you just have to be very careful they will give no quarter so just guys as I like to say, you know what? The best thing to do is don't drive in Jamaica. And here is the thing. We haven't actually met a big truck yet since we've been driving. So we have been pretty lucky. And by that I mean, well, you know, sometimes it is a little tricky. The big vehicle comes around the corner. And here's a problem that you're going to run into. Everybody bought their license. And I kid you not. This is not an exaggeration. Even if you can drive, you are never going to be given a driver's license under the very by simply driving for it. Very few circumstances where you will actually go and drive for the license and the examiner will say, yes, good job, you have passed. It is almost never going to happen. You have to, what we call, tip the examiner. And you are not going to fail. It's really that simple. So, with that mentality in mind, 
most people simply do, simply do not bother to actually drive for the license and get examined. They simply buy the damn thing. You know, they got this really bad stretch of road here. A few years ago, this used to actually be, this was an action, uh, a really decent set of road because this has been, uh, this was resurfaced. And when it was new, it was actually quite well done. Uh, one of the things that they did do when they resurfaced this road was to take off the sharper corners because I guess this used to be a horse and buggy road. So corners like these were actually reduced to um, allow for better navigation, especially for large vehicles. And it has been pretty good. But as happens in Jamaica, they, um, what appeared to have been a really good, uh, what should I call it, asphalt job was nearly a very good cosmetic job and so and so the road has deteriorated now if you look in the center of this road the center of this road has sunk and what that is going to what is going to happen at some point in this road is that that entire right section of the road is going to simply fall off cave off fall down into the valley so these are really really uh, for someone who from a country where they're accustomed to the roads being more or less better maintained because let's face it it is a fantasy that American roads are well maintained they are not there are roads that are way worse than this but in any case for people who are accustomed to roads that are usually better maintained this can be a nightmare to drive and the fact that you have all these corners never ending corners can be very tiring for the uh, North American visitor who is accustomed to long straight roads where you can almost fall asleep driving. So, guys, as I said, if you want to drive in Jamaica, uh, I don't discourage you. Yeah, hell yes, I do discourage you. Don't. If you can at all avoid driving here, I would suggest you not drive here. It's really that simple. But if you have to, it is best to familiarize yourself with the mentality and the culture of driving in Jamaica because it is unlike anywhere else that you have ever been. You will come around the corner like a corner like this for example and you can find a car parked in the middle of your lane facing you. I kid you not. You can come around the corner and there's a taxi guy and he's stopped there and he's having a conversation with a car going in the opposite direction and the road is completely blocked. Those are just things that happen. Welcome to Jamaica. So, just giving you an idea. Don't drive here. People, you will come around the corner and there will be that gentleman just like that. And he will be standing in a position where, well, you would think anyone with half a brain wouldn't be standing, but here he will be. No, that gentleman was properly positioned as far as the general attitude is concerned, but it is a normal thing that happens. And let's not forget the speeding. Speeding is a huge issue here, and when you put speeding together with people who have bought their license, and a lot of young males who, um, who see speeding and I guess changing gears, here is what we're talking about, cars randomly parked on the side of the road, I guess this is your typical roadside garage, and of course it is in the middle of a deep corner. Welcome to Jamaica. Yeah, so you have young guys who have bought their license, have a car, and are speeding. That's a very dangerous situation. It is a recipe for the carnage on the road. And I do mean that in any every sense of the word. The accident rate here is horrendous. Anyhow, here's a cop on my side of the road. So what can you do? So, yeah. We have 
have a horrendous accident rate as I was saying and it's all due to people who have never ever read the road code have no idea what the rules of the road are and are aggressive on top of all of that and there's something else to you that, that is just so weird we in Jamaica have some odd ideas of what what is right and wrong with respect to the road many drivers believe that it is perfectly okay to tailgate and um, if you should hit your brake really hard you have to brake in an emergency situation and they run into the back of you if your vehicle is bigger than theirs there is a mindset that somehow says that you are at fault yeah you heard that right they run into the back of you because they were tailgating, but you are at fault. So, again, as I said, it's a weird cultural dynamic, and I am not sure how weird such things came from. But I am sure the fact that most licenses are bought and not earned has something to do with it. Um, a significant portion of the population also of the male driving population also are, are semi-literate so you are going to encounter that you have semi-literate issues you have um, incompetent drivers uh, you have um, corrupt officials I mean what could go wrong anyway I'm in Spalding guys probably will notice this is the only stoplight we've included in the last 10 miles or so um, uh, usually people do not follow this stoplight but for some odd reason they are doing it today and well you know so here we go um, on my left you can go to Sunbury and a bunch of other places and go back to um, Kingston and so on and so forth and this road takes you to Christiana and to Mandeville um, oddly enough right at this exact spot is Clarendon and Manchester the border between Clarendon and Manchester coming up on my left will be Percy Junior Hospital one of the better hospitals in the one of, one of the better hospitals in the park and that little noise you heard by the way with that thing with the red light on top of it that is a mosquito vectoring um, I guess you could call it system yeah so they are spring place for mosquitoes something that they do regularly regularly around this area given the fact that the hospital is here and they would rather keep the incidence of things like Zika, uh, malaria and so on away from the hospital setting if they can understand why so guys I am going to stop talking and let you just enjoy the ride don't have much issues today it's a nice uh, overcast day yeah I didn't stop talking and you notice right anyway it's a nice overcast day but you know I thought I like those days uh, well it's evening now I think it's somewhere around about five o'clock or closer to six I would guess and we are on a nice Sunday evening drivers appear to be behaving themselves as we go along. Coming up on our right would be the turn off to go to Christiana. Going down to the left is going to be the turn off to go to Mile Gully. So essentially I just continue straight. Go to Mile Gully 
and the and to the world famous pickup pepper factory. Now I don't know if we are going to be going in the in the cobbler pretty soon. Cobbler is one of those places that a lot of people have heard of because it's a strange, it's a strange name. So I'll let you know when you're there. Well, in fact, this right here is the beginning of cobbler. Over on your right hand side will be Knox College. One of the more famous community colleges, one of the more well-known community colleges in Jamaica. Excuse me. And so we are coming through what is essentially the town of Pablo, I guess. Yeah, I guess you could call it that. the American West we call it the one horse town. Yeah. Anyhow. And this is what I'm talking about. He just drives across the street and the, it is a, your job to avoid him. And to avoid a major accident. So yeah. I don't know how many times I can say this but you know welcome to Jamaica. walking in the road and this your job to avoid killing him too. I should say, I love roads like these, the hills like these by the way. I said put a free wheel down them, I'm telling you. Um, when I come up on roads like this, I tend to, I save a lot of gas. Because I just free wheel down those areas. Now of course, you know, you're kind of use up some more by going up these places and you know and going up the other side and yeah I'm just chattering on after I told you I was going to stop talking but listen sometimes when I get going I feel the need to keep going or so I've been told of course not everybody complain about that blah 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 you people who are interested who have trucks in Jamaica and you want a good mechanic this right here is Foy's mechanic shop right here Foy's mechanic shop he does trucks he fixes your trucks he makes trucks he are uh, reconditions refurbishes trucks and we are talking about dump trucks There is such a thing in Jamaica as designated drivers. Now, insurance companies tend to have people who they tend to want you to um, 
to have designated drivers on their insurance. In other words, you can have an insurance policy where you say, only John, Mary, and Tom are allowed to drive this vehicle, and essentially nobody else. And if you, if you, now here is the thing about that insurance, about doing it that way. It, it actually makes no difference in terms of the premium that you pay, and in fact, it makes no difference in terms of the agreement and the policy that you you have. It is simply something that you can do. And uh, by the way, this is a market truck. People, what a bomb buckle at you, you idiot. makes no difference on the insurance policy. There is nothing on the policy that, that designates those things. It is simply something that you can do. However, if you should get into an accident where the person who is driving was not some, somebody who the insurance company designated or who you had designated as one of your drivers on the policy. The insurance company will refuse to pay. And this is what I mean. You have a you are completely insured. The other car is completely insured. You are at fault in no way whatsoever. The other car that is completely insured is completely at fault. But that driver was not someone who the insurance company thought was on the insurance as one of the designated drivers. They will simply say, well, that's not my problem. He's not one of the designated drivers and therefore we are not paying. Completely ignoring, of course, the fact that and that you and by the way they will say that you should sue the other driver because they the other driver breached the insurance policy and therefore they are not paying completely ignoring the fact of course that if the other driver their insured driver breaches the policy they are the ones who should sue that driver not me but that's what, exactly what they do. So, insurance in Jamaica is a complete and total scam.